I received a uh, technical report uh, written by Bob Thomas and Paul Johnson, uh, which was about uh, replicated databases. And they had an, an algorithm in there. And when I looked at the algorithm, I realized that it wasn't quite right. And the reason it wasn't quite right was that it permitted uh, systems to do th uh, things that, in ways that seem to violate causality. That is, things that happen uh, before, uh, you know, one thing that happened before something else uh, would wind up influencing the system as if they had happened in the opposite order. Now, the reason uh, I realized that has to do with my background. And from my interest in physics, I happen to have a very visceral understanding of special relativity, in particular the four-dimensional space-time view of special relativity that was uh, developed by uh, Minkowski in the famous 1908 paper. And I realized that uh, the problems in distributed systems are very much analogous to what's going on in physics because in, or in relativity, because in relativity there's no s notion of a total ordering of events because events will, to different observers will happen, appear to happen in different order. But there is a notion of causality, of ordering between two events in which one event precedes another if for every observer it, it will appear that that event preceded the other. And the, uh, the basic uh, definition is one in which that is that if you know, an event happens, you know, we're at to some person, you know, and, another, and the other event happens to another person, then it's possible for a message or a light wave to be sent from the first person uh, when that event happens, and that it will arrive at the, second, at the second person before that second event happens. And I realized that there's obvious analog of that in distributed systems, which says that one hap event happens you know, to one processor before it happens to another processor. If there was a message or a chain of messages that began at the first processor after this event, and reach the second processor before his event. And that's the, uh, and it's that notion of causality or before that was being violated in this algorithm. And I made a you know, fairly simple modification to the algorithm to uh, uh, correct that. And that's the algorithm that was presented in that paper, along with the definition of the a partial ordering relation. The other thing I realized that I believe Johnson and Thomas didn't realize is that this algorithm was applicable not just to any, uh, not just to distributed databases, but to anything. Uh, and the way to express anything <laughs> is a state machine. Uh, what I introduced in this, pap in this paper was the notion of describing a system by a state machine. Now a state machine is something that's really simple. It, you start, it's something that's started in an initial state and uh, it then takes steps which change its state and what it can do next can depend on uh, incoming messages in this case or uh, from the environment or it can uh, come from uh, or from the, the current state of the machine determines what it can do next. And what I realized and said in that paper that 
any system, what it, you know, if it is a single system, in, in a sense, what it's supposed to do can be described as a state machine, and you can implement any state machine with this algorithm so you can solve any problem. The result of publishing the paper was that some people thought that it was about the uh, partial ordering of the events. Some people thought it was about distributed mutual exclusion. And almost nobody thought it was about state machines. And as a matter of fact, on two separate occasions, when I was discussing that people with somebody, and I said, you know, you know, really the important thing was state machines, they said to me, there's nothing about state machines in that paper. And I had to go back and look at the paper to convince myself that I wasn't going crazy and really did mention state machines in that paper. I've never understood quite why the paper is considered so important in computer science uh, because the algorithm that it presents is of, is of no particular interest. It has historical significance. But I think that somehow what people get out of it is a way of thinking about distributed systems that was so natural to me that I considered it obvious that is not obvious to them and gets them to be thinking in a different way. Uh, this may be related to one difference between me and I think almost all researchers in concurrency, certainly you know, theoreticians, is that in most of the, the research that I've, you know, most of the papers that people write or people I talk to, they think of uh, something like mutual exclusion, for example, either as a programming problem or as a mathematical problem. Uh, I think of it as a physics problem. I mean, the mutual exclusion problem is the problem of getting two people uh, not to be doing something at the same time. At the same time, that's physics. <laughs>